Hi friends! Thank you all so much for being here. I hope that you're all safe and doing well. Today I'll be starting a brand new video series about various J fashion styles such as fairy cape, which is in this video, Lolita fashion, Yaru, and I've been thinking of doing this for a while now. Because of the internet and the rise of social media, information travels faster than ever before, but not all the information on the internet can be trusted and could in fact be misinformation. J fashion, which is short for Japanese fashion, has recently gained many new fans and with the rise in its popularity, the amount of misinformation about J fashion has also risen. So doing a quick Google search on such such a niche topic like J fashion can be a little tricky for people who are new to it and or wanting to learn more about it because um, there's just many articles and TikToks and even some wiki pages that share inaccurate information. Like for example, I've seen a couple of articles that have said that J fashion is cosplay when in fact that is not the case at all. It is not cosplay. So I wanted to sit down and get the record straight with people who are actually a part of this global J fashion community. So some are seasoned veterans who have been wearing or been a part of the community for more than a decade and some are people who are extremely active in the community and have extensive knowledge about the various styles that they wear. So we'll be talking about the history, we'll be talking about the evolution, we'll also be talking about some misconceptions etc and we will be separating fact from fiction within J fashion. Okay, so today I'll be talking about Fairy K with Tavi, aka Dreamy Tavi, and Hannah, aka Rose Quartz Royalty. So thank you both so much for taking the time out of your days to sit down with me and to get the record straight about Fairy K. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Yay. Yeah, super excited. Um, glad to dispel some misconceptions today. <laughs> nice. My favorite. <laughs> Alrighty. So first off, first question, I wanted to ask y'all just to give me like a quick introduction about yourself, how you found out about J Fashion and Fairy K. So how long ago ha was that? And how many years have you been wearing Fairy K for. My name is Tabby. Um, on Instagram, I'm Dreamy Tabby. Things are a little odd now, but I pretty much am at a point where I fit, wear Fairy K or some form of J fashion almost every day. It's just basically my my whole wardrobe is that. But I heard about Fairy K kind of tangentially through my interest with Tokyo fashion and stuff when I was in college. That was about 2010, 2011. That's really when I started looking at J fashion more seriously. Like I I think I could maybe wear this someday. Maybe I will, you know. It wasn't until closer to 2013 that I really knew that there was a word for like this specific style that I liked. And near the end of 2014 is kind of when I started collecting pieces. I would buy like a pastel shirt that I saw at like Target that had, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. little things like that. And then it wasn't really until uh, about 2015, I started wearing it regularly and pretty much I've been wearing it regularly like ever since. So yeah, it's it's weird to think that I've been wearing it for that long, but it's just uh, it's like a it's like a part of me now. Awesome. And what about yeah. you, Hannah? My name is Hannah, and I'm Rose Quartz Royalty on almost all of my social media, and I've been actively wearing Fairy K for about four four and a half years now. I actually fell in love with the style when I was 11 or 12, but didn't really have the resources to get into it as much. I, I waited until I was 17 to actually start actively wearing the style, and I have no clue where I found it. I it was on YouTube though, because I was watching YouTube videos and I would be on Hatsune Miku and then suddenly I was on like Law Factory videos and I was their <laughs> biggest fan as a kid. I just, I loved all of their videos so much and yeah. that was like the kick, the kicker to, to actually getting me to start trying to wear it, which when you're like well, at least when I was 12, my attempts were like a pastel shirt from Forever 21 in like uh, my dark oh, totally. denim skin <laughs> jeans and like my beat up tennis shoes. So, you know, I was trying, but <laughs> it took me a while to actually like get into the style and figure it out. Nice. 
Right on. Awesome. Well, before I get started with the rest of the questions, could I have a little sneak peek of your cords? Well, yeah, a little gander at your outfits for today. All right. You can take wants to go first. Yeah. Okay. Let me push back the chair. <laughs> Okay, so even though it is Texas and it is the middle of August, I am wearing long sleeves because it's rainy here. So I've got my oh, love that twinkle one. shirt from Listen Flavor and ah, uh, seeing if I can get high enough. I have my six percent pannier on because it goes with this shirt so well. And yeah, <laughs> just like basic accessories. I I'm not really one for super hyper styled, hyper accessorized Harry K. I really like more casual wearable coordinates because I just wear them like to go run errands or like go to class and it's hard to take notes when you have 14 bracelets on. Oh no, I feel oh, that. I feel that. <laughs> oh yeah, you would know. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, well, what about you, Tabby? So today, well, I did want to wear something from Spank today because that mm. is definitely a lot of what I'll be talking about with like the beginnings of Barry K and all that stuff. And also I just, I really have a lot of respect for Tabuchi and the brand and everything is just so cute. So mm. the tank top I'm wearing today is from Spank. It just has like a sleepy time Betty Bear print on, Betty by print on it. Or Betty Bear is correct also. He's in it a bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's I just sweet. really like this print. It's just a really cute one. Um, I really like the Spank tank tops, the Spank tops. And underneath, I'm wearing a flannel or a thermal, excuse me, from a Fancy a la Mode, who is like, uh, most Fairy K wearers know who that is, but they're like a more independent Japanese designer. My skirt is, this is my favorite skirt, if, if maybe. Everyone <gasps> wait, 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 wait. I, ju I literally just got that and it's literally <gasps> in like the clothing. Isn't it amazing? No way. <laughs> That's crazy. It is, okay. And now Hannah, Hannah can vouch for me. It literally goes with everything. And it's the way it fits is so perfect. It's not too floofy. So you really can wear it like under any, oh my God, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. Got yeah, and five bucks like three weeks ago, just, so. Yeah, for accessories, just um, pretty standard. Um, I have Angelic Pretty. This is actually from Dreamy Candy or Starlight Deco Dream. Oh, this also them. is from Starlight Deco Dream, actually. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Candy always makes sure my earrings are also from Starlight Deco Dream. I just realized that Candy always makes sure that I'm, I you know I'm accessorized. <laughs> I love Candy. Oh my gosh! I love yeah. seeing them at cons and getting to see everything and touch everything. So it's always sweet. that. Yeah. Well, being able to see, it, well, because you know I don't know. Candy's just such a. They're like, uh, I mean, really, they're like professional at resin. Mm, so yes. seeing their pieces in person is like, oh, it's just like. Yeah, I every time I know Candy's going to be at a con, I'm like, all right, I'm I'm putting a good chunk aside because take the whole I'm not thing. Be able take to the whole myself. thing. Literally, it's always like, okay, I'm going to get this and this and this and this and this. I have a cart. Like, yeah. oh, and then me and um, Hannah are wearing not oh, quite yeah, the matching, but almost matching Choco Mint clips, <laughs> which like R.I.P. Choco Mint. But. <laughs> Mine are actually from Sakura Wantama, who um. Uses, oh, that's right. Yeah, because the they use the same Taubo. manufacturer. So see, she's corrected me. She's the oh. she's the younger, the grasshopper, <laughs> and she is correcting me now. <laughs> Sorry. She's right. <laughs> they both like they they both make the same things, like six percent, uh, choco mint and and uh, Sakura Wantama all use the same manufacturer. So like mm -hmm. my ring is also oh, yeah. Sakura Wantama. That looks like the 6% Doki but Doki it, ring. Yes, literally the only difference oh, is like the 6% yeah. one that one. has a little signature right here. I um, see. So that really it's exactly the same. It's a trick, what? isn't it? What? Okay, that's weird. I remember when I found that website, I was so shook. I was like, oh my God, this is all the Chocomint stuff that I can't find now because yeah. Chocomint. Mm. Cho it, it's interesting because Chocomint as a brand is defunct, but you can still get new choco mint pieces on like closet child i that's where i got this um it is marked as choco mint and it was from closet child but it's like new it's very weird they um, still have stock in store but they're really bad about stocking it online yeah yeah so that i i know i wonder how how much like of the really old good stuff like the fluffy lollipop clips and stuff i wonder there's got to be some stock of those somewhere. <laughs> somewhere out there. But we'll talk about like where exactly to find more fairy oh, yeah. pieces 
for newbies or people wanting to get into it. But uh, let's go way, way back to where it all started. And I just want to know like, uh, like a brief history about Fairy K, how and when it started, and how you found out this information. So um, I'm really interested to see if Tabby and my answers differ in mm. any at all. I found an article by Tokyo Fashion in which they interviewed Tabuchi, and so uh, they asked her, can you talk some more about Fairy K? And she says, at first the fashion was called Spank Girls, and then three months later, Fairy K was born. Some magazines say the pioneer of Fairy K was Spank, but I don't think so. For me, Spank Girls and Fairy K are very different. Fairy K includes a lot of different tastes. I think Zipper Magazine coined Fairy K, and then a month later, Cutie used the term and it spread from there. And so that is like all I personally know about like the true birthplace. So uh, that's, <laughs> that's yeah, my knowledge. Well- it's interesting. That's pretty much what I was going to say. And when you look up, like, you know, the origins of Fairy K and um, what is Fairy K and stuff like that, you you can find a lot of information, but it's not really from, like, reliable, like, mm-hmm. it'll be from, like, super fantastic Wonderland WordPress. And it's, like, it, like all the information in the first paragraph is, like, totally incorrect. So yes. it's, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's interesting because that's what a lot of the information is that's out there and I'm just like oh my okay yeah well, for instance like an article from uh 2000 I don't know 13 14 maybe will be like yeah fairy k has different subtitles and it'll list like pastel goth and I'm like that's not it's not related in any way but it's interesting um since the topic of the video is about misconceptions about mm. um fashion I always credited Tabuchi as the founder of Fairy K I I knew that she um she didn't pioneer the phrase or really use the phrase and she always you know called them spank girls it's interesting because spank the store opened in 2004 and obviously you know I mean, not maybe so much nowadays, but uh, Fairy K really, you can tell, pulls from Spank style a lot. Mm-hmm. There are some looks that are definitely more like Spank, leaning on the Spank side, like neon 80s and stuff like that, that maybe someone wouldn't see and, and say, well, that that looks like Fairy K, because maybe it doesn't, because there are differences. But it, it's funny to, to, to read that Tabuchi says, yeah, I don't credit myself with the beginning of that. And I mean, she didn't maybe invent it, she didn't invent the phrase, but I, I still definitely do credit her as kind of the pioneer of, mm. I mean, you know, if she didn't have that store, if, if there weren't girls running around wearing her designs and, and following her on lookbook and stuff like that, maybe there wouldn't be these articles in Zipper and Cutie for them to make up these, these terms that have now, you know, been so popularized, which is so cool because really when you look at like street snaps and stuff uh, years later, like the 2000 right before I started getting into it is when it was like I I think like at its peak and so you know but it had been popular for years in Japan at that point and and yeah so it's it's interesting to to hear that even she is like yeah I don't I don't really think I started it but really when you look at like the Spank Girls blog for instance that's at least in in my searching and stuff and in my experience that's where it started and that's where it really I guess cutie gave it wings <laughs> but yeah it's 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 interesting because fairy k nowadays has evolved into something so different and separate mm. from style which I think is really cool because you can still see influence it's interesting to see how styles kind of grow and evolve especially something that's not as confined as fairy k there is a lot of room for you know different silhouettes and stuff like that as, as long as you kind of stick to the core of like you know the color palette and and mixing textures and things like that there is you know a lot of room for I, I lost my I, I can't think a lot of the word, room for experimentation yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah exactly well while we're on the topic of like the evolution of fairy k what would you say is the difference between the style when it first started versus now 2021 like is there a very obvious difference between the two? It's hard to say, and I think it depends on kind of who you ask. As a whole, like Fairy K fashion, just as what's most popular then versus now, I, and I could be completely wrong, this could just be my experience, but when I think about Fairy K, when I first got into it, there was a lot more emphasis on making things yourself and Mm. thrifting and and one of a kind pieces it wasn't so much about having all the brand stuff and and I don't have anything against that I collect brand like a 
dragon that hoards gold, but <laughs> <laughs> there, I think was a lot more emphasis on, you know, it kind of, oh, I bought this pastel sweatshirt and then I added all these things to it myself. Nowadays, you would just go and buy something from Nile Perch, which I love Nile Perch, of course, as well. But um, I, I think that has kind of been lost. Not not totally, because um, I, I don't want to paint it as like everybody's just obsessed with brands now, because that's not what it is. But I definitely think it's very different. And I think that Fairy K, particularly what I see nowadays is, is a lot more tailored, including my own style. I, I'm much less casual now than I was when I first started. When I first started, it was much more like, you know, my mints didn't have to match perfectly. Like my shoes didn't have to balance out the top exactly in both style and theme and shape. It, it's just, you know, the meticulousness to which I approach coordinates. And then I see a lot of people do nowadays too. Whereas if you look at, you know, street snaps and, and even people on the Western side, that we're wearing it years ago. It, it just has a very different feel to it. Mm. Yeah. And I have said pretty much the exact thing, same thing. Very early Fairy K absolutely had a massive emphasis on on uh, vintage, and I feel like now it's more vintage, but these specific items. So, yeah, it, yes, the sweatshirts and yeah, the, and, with the yeah. duckies it's and stuff. very curated. You know, the things that they were just picking up out of uh, vintage shops back then. Now we are actively seeking out, and then the remaking and hand making and one of a kind stuff and as you know time goes on you start to see the prevalence increase in prevalence of uh like specifically japanese brands and items that were specifically made for fairy case style rather than things that again like i just went to a thrift shop i picked these up and i i think these look great together but i also think like a big part of that also it, it also is the fact that uh those styles those the, those early roots of the fashion were 15 years ago. And so our, the contents of our thrift shops it's nowadays are that. completely different. Mm. We are not seeing as much vintage because, I mean, at least personally, I know where I am. A lot of our thrift shops curate and they mm. only want like the modern stuff. They only want mm. stuff for a certain look. And that's maybe that's just where I live. But you, you see a lot less of those items from the 1980s and 90s that were so prevalent in the early fashion and are, are much harder to find nowadays and so I think that's part of, probably partially why it's harder to find vintage things or like people aren't using them as much just because you know that's 15 years 15 years is a lot of change and a lot of wear and tear and destroy on clothes and so yeah I think that's changed a lot but um even like specifically with the last year with the pandemic I don't know if you have noticed this and but I know I have and I know people in the fairy k discord have but People wanting fancy looks has skyrocketed. That is like the oh, current hot. It. I have noticed that. Love it. And so it's like actually really cool to see. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. I hate to interrupt. But no, it, you're fine. It's actually really been cool for me to see. Cause when I when I think about, you know, when I first started Fairy K, there was, I mean, I I wish that I had known this was gonna come up because I would have looked up their name <laughs> stuff. But you know, you Google search Fairy K in the same four picture show up and and you just know you know but that's who was popular at the time time paso raindrops and stuff like that and then you know we kind of started to see a lot of those people leave the fashion a lot of those people leave j fashion just in general um and there was kind of like a, a dip in popularity i would say and people really were wearing more of what i call con fashion uh, yes for, oh, yeah yes. Which, there's nothing wrong with that but uh, you know that it's not really the same as as what makes fairy k fairy k the silhouettes aren't there the mood isn't there like a a sweatshirt you bought at a convention and a seifuku skirt isn't necessarily going to be fairy k every time and that's fine uh, but it's interesting and i love to see i almost said new hires because of work <laughs> <laughs> um, it, these these younger kids uh, to me, they're kids to me, the, these younger people that are just now starting Fairy K that are really, their outfits are so close to what I remember when I first started wearing it. So it's really, really been interesting to see it swing back in that direction where we're seeing penoirs and, and thermals and vintage pajama pieces and, and really outfits that you would see someone walk out of Spank in. And so it, that's been really cool to see because I, I think that that was kind of Th there was not a lot of that for quite some time, I think, or at least it wasn't as prevalent. 
I think that's something that I'm like extremely proud of the fashion for. And because when I came in, it was very much, this is 2016, 2017, when I finally decided like, okay, I am going to wear this style and coming in and being like, (laughs) what, where did the fashion go? Like, cause I was here in 2011, 2012. It's the time of like the massive body line tutus. They've got like seven of them stacked on. We've got like 14 leg warmers and sock combinations going on. And I was like, this is what I love. And then coming in and being like, why is everybody in skinny jeans? What's going oh my, on? Yeah, exactly. Uh, a, a hot topic cardigan and skinny jeans and a pair of wire U's, which again, there's nothing wrong with that. I have a closet full of wire U's. I have a closet full of items that I didn't get from a Japanese brand that I wear in my fashion, but it's just, the, and, and I think actually, I, I don't want to skip ahead. I know this is on Christina's list. Um, the misconception that a, an outfit with all pastels is the same as an outfit in Fairy K, which is not the case. But we'll get to that, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the next question was actually common misconceptions that you would like to dispel. So I guess we could talk about that. The the that elephant in the way. room about pastels. <laughs> all pastels. Is Fairy K yes or no? No. No. <laughs> yeah. So it's like definitely not. And the very first thing that I want to say about that, just right out of the gate, I want to say that if your outfit's not fairy K, it doesn't mean that you suck and your outfit sucks mm. and I hate you. <laughs> not, I mean, I can understand unsolicited if I just comment on someone's pictures. This isn't fairy K. That's rude. Like, shut mm. up. But I mean, it it is frustrating, you know, to see if I go on the fairy K hashtag on Instagram, it's a, it's a nightmare. It's literally a nightmare, you know? It, and I'm sure you, you could say the same thing about any J fashion. I think um, a lot of people see, you know, it, it's like they use it as, as like an aesthetic hashtag. Like they'll put mm-hmm. pastel, kindercore, hello kitty on a picture of someone wearing a bra and a, and a safe skirt. And that's not any of those things. So it, mm-hmm. it's kind of become just one of those hashtags that people just use and use and use. So mm-hmm. then people don't understand what the fashion is. So then people will post like an e-girl outfit, which is super cute, but it's not very K. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with Lolita and all the other things that you tagged it. So then there are people who use the hashtags just to be like, get reach. But then there's the people that see that. And that's where a lot of the misconceptions come in because they're like, oh, this mm-hmm. is what fairy K is. Exactly. I'm going to click on the hashtag. <laughs> oh, look at all these things. Is that what fairy K is? This is awesome. I'm going to wear a wig and do doll makeup to look like, um, I, I, you know, yes, you know the doll maker. Yeah, yeah. Which again, there's nothing wrong with that. But is that fairy K? Eh, you know, it depends. And it's hard to say because what isn't isn't fairy K. It, it's not, it's not as strict as Lolita like we were talking about before. But there is still a feel to it. You know, there is still a mood and there is still an underlying so like what Hannah was saying before with you know a sweatshirt and skinny jeans I mean that that it's not a fairy K outfit which is fine but you know there's elements to it that make it part of that sub style it's it's hard to explain I'm not good at explaining (laughs) I actually have a little chart and I don't know Christine if you want to pull the triangle uh, well, I, oh, okay. I, should, I, should, I should grab the triangles and we should put the triangles in here. No, this is, I, I don't know if I showed you this. This is me being a nerd and thinking about games in which you have a character and you can increase one statistic and the, it's like a spectrum and the opposite side of the spectrum de- decreases. Mm-hmm. See if oh, you guys okay. can see this. This is kind of my weird little brainchild <laughs> that I came up with about things being fairy K versus not being fairy k you have three like pillars that i like to i just recognized them one day and was like wait this makes so much sense so you have texture on one side you have silhouette and you have like details and by details i mean like polka dot or like prints polka dots patterns that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. and so like the more you pull to one side the more you can decrease on the other and 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 in order to keep that kind of fairy k feel sometimes you have to if I say, oh, I don't really want to lean into the the silhouette today. Let's like add more patterns in my outfit. And let's play with textures. Let's add some tool. Let's add some lace up in here. Let's add like some really floating nice stuff. 
That's a really good point. Yeah. I Well, I like that too, because there are, you know, depending on the situation, I've seen people wear skinny jeans in Barry Keg and it fits the bill. Dolly is a great example. Um, I know that Dolly has a pair of skinny jeans with like polka dot prints on yes. them. If you wear that with, you know, an appropriate pair of shoes, Reeboks, for instance, and a vintage sweater, well, I mean, that's very much depending on how you style yourself. That's, that's a fairy K outfit, you know, but then if you have, you know, the dark wash skinny jeans and, you know, just a regular, t- I, it, it's, it's a fine line, but it's just kind of, yeah, I like that. The graph. It's very nuanced. Yeah, like it's really graphs. helpful. <laughs> Let me see if I can pull up some pictures of the triangles for you guys. I- <laughs> triangles. I so um, well, it's like, to me, I just think that outfits should have a balance anyway, regardless of mm-hmm. whether I'm wearing fairy K or not, I approach, this is, I sound like such a dweeb, but like I, this is just how I am. It's like putting an outfit on, it's like a ritual for me. Like I pick, let's just as an example, say, I know I want to wear this piece. I build everything off of that piece. So every accessory I wear has to match in theme and in color. And if I'm wearing purple shoes, well, I want to be wearing something purple up on top too, maybe a cardigan or a big bow. Like I balance it out so meticulously. And that's kind of what I was talking about before where, I mean, I do that, but that's not necessarily what you see when you look at a Tokyo fashion street snap, you Mm -hmm. look and you say, this is a great outfit. It works. Did I do a science project before I put it together? No, but it's still a good outfit. Like, you know, that's just kind of like how my personal style has evolved because I have so many pieces. I like to meticulously pair them. Uh, Sometimes I I think I approach it with a sweet Lolita brain where (laughs) I'm like, everything has to match, but it is, but it it pays off. It pays off because you always look amazing. Like it, all the hard work that you put into it, it shows. So why it's just, it's just like fun to me. It's just Mm -hmm. like, it's, and when it's all on, it's just like such, such a sense of completion. Like I truly do it because it's just like, it's just fun. Like It's just, I like hearing all my, my accessories tinkle and jingle when I walk around. I like, I don't know. I, I like seeing the glitter out of the corner of my eye. I just, it's, yeah, lip- it's just satisfying to see all of your hard work come together and you're like, oh man, I look good. This looks cool. so nice. <laughs> I know, which is funny because, you know, everyone and not just Fairy K, any J fashion or any alternative style, everyone thinks who doesn't understand, you know, you just do it for attention. Obviously I attract attention. I, there is nothing that I hate more than when someone stops and lingers for more than like a couple seconds to say, oh, I love your outfit. They want to stop and they want to look at everything. And I'm just like, I know, like, I know, I know, but like, please, like, oh my God. It's so, (laughs) it's funny that I, I do this intentionally. And of course, you know, the add being a man into that, that's Mm -hmm. just, what even more like what is happening over there I just do not oh my god <laughs> there's no, I a Lolita that. comment that's like I wish that like only Lolitas could be seen or I could only be seen by other <laughs> Lolitas and that's how I feel with like any J fashion I wish that I could only be seen by other people who wear J fashion and also people who are like interested in the style or like are not going to be jerks about it you know well, there's a difference and when we all know this I know for a fact we've all had interactions like this there's a huge difference between something someone coming up to you and saying wow your outfit's you know really something and they just mm-hmm. kind of linger and stare and then there's, you think about someone else who says wow your coordinates really cool immediately I know oh yes oh the lingo so they'll stop to talk to me about you know I love this shirt is that milk limb or something like just being able to talk with someone who like has a knowledge about it or is genuinely interested in it versus someone who's just like, why you look like a a fucking freak. Can I look (laughs) at you? Like, obviously that's two completely different interactions. Oh my God. And it's like, it's hard to know who it's going to be until after the very first compliment. And then I'm like, okay, I know you said something kind to me, but like, I'm going to leave. You're making me uncomfortable. (laughs) <laughs> it's like that spider-man meme where they're like pointing at each other and they're like yeah yeah exactly <laughs> when someone is, yeah there's nothing cooler than when I'm not at a convention or someone who's wearing normal clothes comes up to me and is like I love your coordinate I'm like oh my god you know you're in you know it's it's yeah. just different and it's I just cool to... sorry <laughs> no I I used to work as a tour guide at at one of my colleges and I came in early for my shift and my twin brother had just finished doing a tour of this one, this uh, one group. And I I got to wear fairy to the job, which was really fun. And um, 
best. This <laughs> girl who was just in the tour comes over to me. She's like, are you in Fairy Gay? And oh, that's no. my friend Alexa. So shout out. Shout out, Alexa. So I was- are friends now too? Yes, yeah, so oh, we're friends now. And, oh, and she goes to college down here. And like, she's in my comm. And I think we're going to go see oh. Promare in a couple weeks when it comes back to-, to so, That's so cool. Oh my God. I she love also that. wears Fairy K. But she, like, when we met, she was still in that kind of Conwear kind of phase, or like she had that one oh, everybody's been there. strawberry, or is it strawberry? Or I think it's peach milk shirt that you can get off like AliExpress oh, or whatever. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it's some of, some of the baby stuff. And so being able to see her style grow and see her just like absolutely kill it. She has fantastic awesome. coordinates. Though. Does she have an Instagram? I don't think she is okay. uh, her coordinates on Instagram, mainly on the Discord though. But yeah. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, man. I I love. Well, first, I I just want to say I love that there's a Discord. I love that you run and have this Discord, and that there's a whole entire new community of people still active online regularly. Yeah. That's awesome because that was missing. I think for a long time we had a very active community on Tumblr. And I think obviously you can talk about Tumblr going downhill forever. That's just such a long story. But I think really before Tumblr really went to shit, all the Fairy K and J fashion people just yes. kind of moved off the platform because there were so many fucking kinksters. Yes. And that's what pushed me off too. Terrible. Uh, so and then before it, that, there were the pro boards. Uh, oh, the pro boards. Yeah. I wasn't a part of the pro boards, but I, I would sit outside uh, my husband's college classes and wait for him on his laptop and I would read the pro boards like oh my god that is so what's funny. a pro board is it like a forum it's a forum yes so okay. there was a fairy k forum and I know the person who runs fairy tips had control of it I don't know if she oh, started I know. it I remember fairy um, tips oh my gosh and so there was actually talk about them. very briefly very briefly talk about me getting control <laughs> of the pro boards and trying to revive life into it because I actually Oh. on almost every uh fairy k like big fairy k space on the internet right now or like internationally they're definitely smaller ones that i have no fingers in but like the reddit the discord there yeah we talked <laughs> for a hot second about like should we revive the pro boards uh, i don't i think we they ended up um shutting down so it's kind of sad the end of an era but like yeah. i mean i think you can pull up you know on the archive that yes. that's a I love going on the Wayback Machine and looking at like really old outfit photo blogs and stuff like that. And like the pro boards and stuff like that. A lot of the times the images are all dead, but like I, all the time I go on the web archive to look at like old 6% posts and stuff. And it's like, it's cool because it's interesting to see how much, you know, a style has changed and mm -hmm. like looking at the old, have you, when you first started wearing uh, Fairy K, Hannah had Milklim already closed down. They had, they had not because I ended up, I got one item <laughs> directly from them before they closed. It was a skirt from them that was tulle and had little piping around, like tulle, not piping, just like short pieces of tulle around the bottom that had been stitched on. And it was okay. kind of like a rectangle skirt and it had a really wide piece of elastic. I've actually had to retire it because it, it's, it is literally falling apart. Oh um, no. Because <laughs> it's new milk limb and like their quality went <laughs> near the oh. end. Damn, um, yeah, that's too bad. I don't think I have anything from New Milk Lim. But we had I, uh, had the style for, or we, I had been in the style for probably, I think they closed in 2018. So about a year, maybe 2019. 2018? No, definitely not 2019, because that no, was. 2018, I think. Yes. I should have looked up. Damn, that, that was, that was sad to watch. At Milk Lim actually was the and this is so funny now because i i've been using shopping services for years i get a shopping service order like at least once a month because i'm insane but milklin the milklin web store was the very first time ever that i've used a shopping service and i i got a, the milklin snapback which is crazy because i almost didn't buy it if i had known how hard that was going to be to find later i still have it um so i still have my milklin snapback which i love it's too big for me but i put a candy clip like right in the gap where you can see my head doesn't fit in it. So it's like, perfect. Yeah. So that was the first time I ever ordered anything from there. And that was in 2014 or 15, I think. But yeah, so that's the other thing that's kind of sad too. A lot of people think is Fairy K dying. And it's mm. like, no, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that. It's just that things are, and that's the other thing too, especially from our perspective, we're not in Japan. We don't walk around and, and see these people. We see what gets photographed and we see yes. what's popular on the streets right now which is not fairy king anymore 
And a lot of times, you know, with uh, fruits and stuff being defunct, nowadays, kids just post it on their social media. They just post yeah. their own back social media. But even like Japanese accounts, like they don't hashtag their things Fairy K or, you know, it's not about the style. It's just about the clothes that they're wearing, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah, it's, yeah, Milkland closing was a, was a blow. That was really sad. I'm still sad about that. Actually, one of the, just since we're on the subject, do you follow Funky Pens? I do. I was about to say, are you going to talk about Funky Pens? Yeah. Posted on Instagram. So one of the, one of the uh, artists for Milkland as made an Instagram has been posting their designs on Instagram and I'm like please please would you would you please like just just do something just a little <laughs> crumb, like please. we would all eat it a up crumb. so fast a little crumb please I'm begging I'm you I'm starving pen, please <laughs> Oh gosh. Yeah. But then it, it's fun because then that's kind of part of, that's the other thing too. That's, that's part of the fun for me with, uh, with Fairy K is like, it, is collecting things because I have, it's, this is so embarrassing. Um, like I posted a picture from inside because I have a mirror inside my closet. This is the first time in my life I've had a walk-in closet. It's so cool. I'm so happy. Uh, yeah, me and my husband just moved into a new apartment less than a year ago. So it's like, that's where I'm at now. My first walk-in closet ever. And it's Congrats. full of pants. Thank you. But yeah, so I, I took a picture and I posted it on my Instagram. And and s- several people now have asked me like, where are you? What store is this? And I'm like, this is my house. <laughs> like, I'm living the dream, okay? This is my closet. And everyone's like, your closet looks like the Spank store. And I'm like, no, it's just because it's, it's crowded and, and it's full of toys and baby things. But like... <laughs> Oh my gosh. But, but yeah, it's, that's, that's part of the thing too, is that like, that I love so much about Barry Kay is like finding these one of a kind pieces, going back to talking about how a lot of things used to be like one-off. It, like if you go on, you know, these secondhand shopping sites, for instance, and look for stuff from Spank, of course, Spank made mass produced pieces like this tank top. There's several designs on, on this cut, which I have several of them. But the thing that I love about Spank is that, you know, Tabuchi makes one of a kind pieces as well using different kind of fabrics and things like that so it's not just about the things that are mass produced it's about the things that are truly one of a kind and it, it's funny because I, I I bought like a jacket for instance off of Mercari years and years ago just it was it uh, I bought it because I thought it was oversized but it was actually a children's medium jacket oh, we hate when that happens <laughs> luckily it still fits by the grace of God but like it's a three-fourth sleeve for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, it was just like a plain pink, like a gilding zip up. And there was like glitter spray on it. And like a drawing of like an ice cream, like actual a drawing, you can see the the ink marks on the it's so it's just mm-hmm. so cool. And then yeah, so I, I found that in Mercari and I was like, oh, this is awesome. So I ended up buying it. And I found a stock photo of it a couple weeks ago. And it was like, ancient, like, old, like 2010 or earlier. And I was like, Oh, my gosh, this is crazy. And there's one like just so that's part of the fun, I think, is is like the the one of a kind pieces, the one of a kind thrift find, you know, the one thing that you happen to find because you walk into a vintage store just for five seconds and you just happen to see this amazing thing. And it's like, oh, my God. And it just, you know, it, it's just fun. It's just so cool. <laughs> yeah, I have the like the rainbow sheets on my bed right now. And I after I class one day <laughs> went to my went to the Goodwill by my college and was just like, ah, it's Wednesday. I get a student discount. Let's go in and check. Oh, and I'm sick. walking around and I'm like, huh, these seem really familiar. And I looked at them and I was like, I, I know I know these, but I can't figure out where from. And so I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to buy them. I'm just going to buy them. And I get in the car and I go, oh, <laughs> because I was not expecting to find in like my super, super small. I mean, Random small, local. Like, and I think that's probably the best find that I've ever, ever found locally, but like, that was not something I was ever expecting to find. And, and that's one of the, especially the really, locally, especially locally, especially for like seven bucks. Dang, Dang. seven bucks. Yeah, it was, it was Dang. Oh my gosh. Good I gave him a good <laughs> wash and was like, these are perfect. Mm. Very cool. It's definitely one of my special interests. And so it, it, it plays oh, yeah. such a big part in my life. And especially since I do all that moderating and like am so constantly in contact with the kids. It's a big part of of my life. And so I really like being able to talk to anybody who will listen to me about it. 
tired of it. He's all, I already know. I know about Tabuchi. I know. I don't care. <laughs> I get it. I know. Like, my my oh friends my from high school said, uh, when I, once I started getting in contact with like other J fashion people, they were like, Hannah, I love you. I am so glad that you found somebody who knows what the heck you're talking I'm about. Sick. Because I love you and I love listening to you talk, but we have no clue what's going on. And so you're I'm like, really glad. What the you- hell is milk lamb? I'm like, <laughs> why is it called milk? Is it a palindrome? <laughs> yes, it's a palindrome. But you like, call me that? I didn't know that. Candy was like, I love that it's milk backwards and forwards. And I was like, it's what? Yes, just got that. Right? Oh my gosh. Which is so cute. How cute is that? Milk it's limb. Like, yeah. The K, they share the K. That's crazy. Weird. Oh man, yeah. that's so smart. Okay, well, let's jump back into our questions. Um, Since we were talking about, you know, just pa- the, the pastel thing, can bright or dark colors be worn with Harry K? Or is that oh, yeah. not? Okay. Yes. It, I think it depends. It like, might take the reins on that one, but yeah, yeah, it really, like Hannah said, it really does depend. You can wear, you can wear hot pink in a fairy cake yes. outfit, electric blue, I think. Neons, you know. usually yes. But again, like, I feel like you have to also kind of balance them. You can't, you can't go like crazy bright. Like you just have to balance them right. But yes, yeah. absolutely pinks or neons. And when it comes to like darks, like dark purple is one of my favorite things to mm-hmm. see you never see anybody do stuff with dark purple because it's hard it's not something i'd ever be you like gotta find the right piece hello baby fairy cave like beginner would you like to have these dark colors they're like no yeah well <laughs> I, they don't, I feel like you have to know what you're you, doing yeah it's well it's kind of like i heard someone say something similar about lolita before where there you know might be things that are maybe a little bit more difficult to cord could someone who's more seasoned and experienced with coordinating things maybe do like you were talking about a dark purple or even i if you ask me what color can never be in fairy k someone might say brown well it can be done but you know if you're wearing a, a shirt like okay my spank tank top that has the panda bear with the cookie and the ice cream on it you can wear a brown cardigan with that or whatever you know so but can you wear an all brown it, so it really does depend on balance as far as darks go I know this is my pet peeve this was my pet peeve this is why I stopped posting there was a Facebook group the Fairy K and Decor International community on Facebook um, and it used to be you know people would post their coordinates and stuff in there every day and as more people got added it kind of just it wasn't moderated as well and I think that's just the nature of things like that I moderate it now so you can post oh you do (laughs) oh yeah I I think I left or maybe I I, who's to say because I'm not really on Facebook anymore if I'm being honest but that's good to know but yeah I there have been multiple times where I've seen people comment in that Facebook page for instance say you can't wear black and fairy cake which drives me bonkers because first of all yes you absolutely can especially like how are you gonna wear black and white polka dots if you can't yeah. wear black? Mm-hmm. Especially when you get to those like kind of spanky yeah. kind of crossover right. pieces. You're like, uh, well, that's an iconic print. It, again, it's all about like, is it incorporated correctly? Because like, I wouldn't do like an all pastel look with like a random black skirt in there. Like, it would but look weird. maybe if it was like the their body line has a black tutu. Um, that's the rainbow one that everybody has with all the bows and the rainbow trim on it. Yes. You might be able to work with that. But oh, I would yeah. not just like throw in like, ah, here's some uh, random black items. It's it's all, it has to be very intentional when you want to bring in a trickier color, like grays or like a brown where like Tabby said, you have something that already has it on there and that already meets the style. So, okay, let's try to like add this in. Is the cut right? Does it have additional oh, details cut. that yeah. helps help it, uh, you know, work better for Fairy K? So. There's, a lot, there's so many factors. It's such a nuanced style. And I've, I've heard people say that Fairy K is the hardest J fashion to get right. And I really? honestly, yeah, because, because it's all nuanced. You can follow every instruction in the book to a T, but if you don't know, they could say graphic shirt, t-shirt, pastel graphic t-shirt. Yeah. I go to a Hot Topic and I grab a pastel graphic t-shirt. There's no guarantee that this pastel graphic t-shirt is going to work for Fairy K. Mm-hmm. They could say, oh, a, uh, like a skirt or, you know, like some, some shorts or like a uh, voluminous pants. Okay. Well, what cut of pants are you getting are they you know what are we working with are they super tight everywhere are they like nice that nice 80s baggy look like what are you looking for you it's so nuanced you really have to know what you are looking for in order to be able to 
recognize it. And once you get it, it's like, oh, of course, I know it. Exactly. It kind of makes sense. It just kind of clicks. Yes. Uh, and I think, well, and here's the thing too. I think some people are just, even people who are like interested in J fashion, um, some people are just not fashion inclined. They don't really care <laughs> or think, about, which is fine. I mean, not everyone can be, I think I'm, I'm obsessed with it to the point of it being annoying to everyone around me, but obviously not everyone can be that way. But yeah, so there is, you just kind of have, there's, there's stuff about fairy K that like can't really be taught. It's like, you have to just try. And I definitely worn my fair share of questionable to straight up bad outfits, you know, but I mean, that's just how, I mean, that's just how it is. That's how you and learn. Yeah. You find yes, what that's... pieces work for you. That's the thing that, and I, I actually don't remember this may or may not be a question. The thing that I always tell newbies and this is why it kind of it frustrates me because I don't want people to think I'm like mean or whatever because I'm like well this is fairy k isn't strict as far as fashion goes but it is important to me that you know people understand the guidelines so to speak because then the style does get muddled and then it does get misunderstood and then it does become conflated with things like you know girls who dress like sexy babies like which is not my business but I don't want anything to do with it I don't want people to think it's the same thing it, it can be frustrating and irritating to varying degrees <laughs> based on the situation but I also don't want newbies to feel like they have to make the perfect fairy k outfit every time because it's just not going to happen other thing about that too is with fairy k there's so many different ways that you can kind of take it that you really do have to get a feel for what silhouettes you like, maybe what colors you like. Maybe you'll try something that's popular, but then when you wear it, you think, well, this just really isn't for me. So that's why I think it's important to not start off by like going on Mercari and buying a bunch of brand because maybe you get it and maybe the brand doesn't fit the way that you like, or maybe this color is just not for you at all. Like, so it is important to thrift things so that, you know, kind of get a feel for what, you are comfortable in and and that goes for color and silhouette and I mean all that kind of different stuff you know I've there are some prints that I've tried and I just think you know this is just not for me I don't like gingham for instance I don't know it's just not uh not for me there's certain motifs that are just I don't like it I don't know why I don't like wearing like humans on my shirt I don't know why I just don't I don't like having people on my shirts it's always got to be human literally I don't know why it's just like human beings yeah, like literally like a person, like, uh, like I've seen brands where they'll have an image of a person wearing the style. And and I've seen that in all kinds of different styles, not just Fairy K, like, you know, Lolita and Otome and all kinds of stuff. But I don't know, that's just my thing. But I didn't know that until I wore it. And I was like, why don't I like this? It's there's a person on it. I don't, I don't know why. That's a very weird example. But, you know, you might wear a polka dot thing and just decide, mm, I mean, Spank really isn't for me. Or, you know, even the big glittering nip sweaters like maybe you find one and spend $80 on one and you're so excited and then you put it on and you're like this is so uncomfortable I know that's a very very common thing it's like people are like oh fancy sweaters I love them but they they are the lyrics in them it can be very scratchy and so there are sometimes just things that you just have to say you know what not, not for me. me you know what this doesn't fit me not my brand let's go to a different brand let's find a, a brand that does make items that fit me better and you know don't hyper focus on this one brand that doesn't make items that fit and you, you know what like just there's a lot that is out there for you exactly there is so much out there in the world and and that's something that really makes me sad sometimes is when people are like oh well I love xyz brand but I can't fit them you know it, it's one of those things where it is difficult because fairy doesn't have the same cataloging aspect as like Lolita does, where we have oh, all of God. the measurements on hand for everything. And you, sometimes you just got to watch stuff. Cause like, I hear a lot of people say, Oh, I, I love Nile Perch. I can't fit any Nile Perch stuff, but I have an Some overskirt other stuff from them. Is pretty forgiving. Yeah. yeah. That goes up to, I think it's 160 centimeters flat. Oh mm. damn. yeah. Flat. So the wheat. So, so yeah very forgiving so you just kind of have to it's it's all experimentation and you know knowing what fits you and knowing how things fit like this shirt that I have on Tabby wears as a dress I cannot wear that as a dress because I am yeah. five foot seven and so while I may have my heart set on wearing this item as a dress it that doesn't work for my body type because you know you've, you've got to learn to figure out hey what do I like what fits me what how does how does this fit me yeah well and that's actually I think why it's so cool to have like 
a community and why I love the discord so much. And because, you know, like I, I see sometimes, you know, there'll be people that, you know, comment on things or say, oh, I, you know, love X, Y, Z, but I, I don't know if it would fit me or not. And, and that's, of course, it is a privilege to be really small, like mm-hmm. I am. Not only am I really, really short, you know, I'm pretty small. I can fit into some children's clothes, which obviously benefits me. In Fairy K, I wear children's pajamas all the time. But I, I do also know because I have such a humongous wardrobe and I bought and sold and kept so many different things that I have a pretty good idea of, of what is and isn't going to be plus size friendly for brands like Milk Limb and Listen Flavor and Galaxy and things like that, which there is a common misconception. Of course, there all kinds of different people think I can't wear Fairy K because it doesn't suit my skin tone or because I'm a man or because this or that or this or that. But of course, plus size wearers are always going to be the first to say, well, they, they just don't make it for me. Like, mm-hmm. understandably so, because Japanese fashion and, and I mean, everything just kind of comes in one size. Yeah, in um, general, it's all really sucks. That. But that is actually part of what I like so much about Fairy K is that it actually is really easy for someone who is plus size to get into that because you can go to a thrift store and you can find, you know, vintage pieces, big nice cozy sweaters you don't have to rely on brands that don't fit you or don't make clothes in your size but then also there is a lot of brands that will make things that fit you there's a lot of stuff that I have from Milk Limb that I people up to I think 3x could fit into which is really really nice because everybody deserves to dress just cute and just do whatever they feel like so that's what I love about the fact that we have a community is that you know whereas if I happen to see a comment I can come and let someone know, hey, I actually own this piece. You want me to send you the measurements? Or, you know, I can tell them, hey, like, like with Milkland, for example, I pretty much know so much about the brand that I can see an image of an item on Mercari. And basically, yeah. So you're kind of like the human embodiment of the Lolita library, but the Fairy K library. <laughs> We're actually um, low-key working on one. Uh, oh, really? Early, we oh, have my gosh. A- channel in the fairy discord which i really need to update i've tried to get the godparents to help me but i think everybody's so busy this time of year that it, it's it's hard to uh, yeah. uh that we're, we're calling uh fairy bray and so we have oh. a channel where we're trying to document popular pieces and the sizing on that so that that can be a resource for our our plus size friends and maybe well, having that as a resource for the lead is lifesaver because otherwise you spend four hundred dollars on a dress and I hope it fits like Mm -hmm. sucks like yeah and there's nothing nothing more horrible and awful than buying something that you're so so excited about and you get it and it just does not fit you and it there's just no way and it's heartbreaking and I can't imagine how that feels for someone that has to experience that more than I ever have had to you know it just sucks so it, it sucks to feel like just by default you're excluded from something because of something that you have no control over like mm-hmm. so it, I that's part of what I like about fairy K is that really yeah. any truly can wear it and like we said earlier there are so Bless many you. options and so many <laughs> so many brands that are uh are, are being accommodating and I was actually looking up trying to find more information on the rainbow skirts that Deetra just released oh, because yeah. I'm very excited about that and so- I think I, I need to look it up but it's like 150 centimeters on the skirt is the maximum on it and I think that is absolutely phenomenal Not bad. yeah because one of my biggest like gripes with the western art fairy art community and sometimes uh you can just say arts yes, cow. Our, our arts, <laughs> arts cow, uh it, is okay. that the textured bottoms are such a staple piece in um, street snaps, and that's not always an option that every body size has. And so it's used to be, you know, several years ago, once you got to a certain point, you just got printed skater skirts. That was the only thing available. And that's honestly heartbreaking. And so I'm so yeah. proud of artists like Miss Alphabet, who's been doing phenomenal. And then obviously Dietrich just came out with those skirts. Peacock Alorum. Who else? There's, there are so Candy actually started. And Candy, more yes. Hand- yeah. Who and are of course, we talked about these. craftsmanship is just beyond. Like, she's so talented. So, I love so her. She's while like we're on the topic about brands, what are both of your favorite Fairy K brands? That's hard to say. 
Well, I, of course, I, I think my favorite brand of all time is 6% Doki Doki. And I wouldn't necessarily call them a Fairy K brand, but obviously there's a lot of pieces. That's actually part of what I love so much about 6%'s pieces is that they're one piece can be extremely versatile there's pieces that I've worn like the same piece that I could wear feasibly in like a, a fully fancy coordinate with a peignoir and a this and a that and layered necklaces and all that but then in the same piece I could wear it in a super poppy cord if I wanted to I could even wear black with that piece if I wanted to with a decora look so yeah maybe six percent isn't like a fairy k brand I think they are I think they count yeah, you're Thank wearing you a six percent skirt right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I mean that piece is just iconic. The hold that that skirt had and still has mm -hmm. on the fairy gay community. Wow, but yeah, and so that, and then of course, I, I uh, obligatory. I have to say, Spank. I just have so much respect for Tabuchi as a creator, and and not just Spank too, but there were also two other locations that she had opened. There was a second Spank location, and then there was another location which was called Ticket to Darling. So she has, I mean, I mean, obviously she's a professional, so yes. I have a lot of respect for her as a person and for her brand. And as far as, cause of course the, the goal is, you know, I, I want to get back into art and stuff. And it's like, but that really is the goal is to have one-off pieces in addition to is selling your art on stuff that's mass produced like this, being able to create one single cool thing with fabric that you happen to find at some garage sale or something. It's like, there's just something so awesome about that. So yeah, I, I really respect her vision and, and her commitment to the brand over such a long amount of time. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. My favorite brands, I'm pretty much like straight up and down. I don't dip my toes into Spank very often, but like pretty much straight up and down fairy. Um, Milklim stole my heart as, as a kid. And so I still have a massive soft spot for Milklim. And I think most of like my sweaters and stuff are actually from them. But then I also really love Listen Flavor, and I love how they kind of incorporate that kind of yummy kawaii element into some of their cords. Yeah. Like I was having, or I was having a conversation with a friend the other day over boba, and I was just like, people ask me, why does this sheep have like, why does he have a razor blade in him, like in his little fur? Like why is that there? He's got like a little ball and chain and like a scar. Like why is there an eyeball in him? And I'm like I don't know. It just is. You know what? It's cool. It's it's cool. <laughs> it's the vibe. Candy. It's <laughs> exactly so but uh I've also really been into maniac stuff recently I really just like they have a very specific whimsical feel to them I recently got a short-sleeved hoodie from them and I I want to uh, use that in every ew. single look that I make I have a handful of pieces from them now but it's just like so whimsical and unique and not necessarily something you see every brand making and uh I, I don't know I've really been vibing with that recently yeah, I, it's funny you, you brought them up. I actually, well, first of all, it, it's funny. I used to think it was literally pronounced Mania Q until- Oh yeah, that's I, what oh. I thought too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I Maybe I'm wrong, I don't it, know. And I was, no, you're right. It is pronounced Mania and, and I know that because I, I saw it written, because it's usually written in, in English letters, you know? Mm -hmm. I saw it written in Katakana and I was like, oh, that's straight up says Maniac. I've been saying it wrong oh, oh, okay. for years. But yeah, that actually that Maniac, so Milkland was the first website that I used a shopping service for. Maniac actually didn't have a feature in which they would just ship it directly to you. You would just send them an email and say, this is what I want. I actually bought a jacket from them. This must have been in 2013 or 14. I, I had barely any Fairy K pieces. I ended up selling the jacket because it had a sailor collar. And that was one of the things that I learned. They're just not for me. I don't like wearing them. I, I don't know. So I ended up selling the jacket. But yeah, you guys maybe both will know. Definitely, I think Hannah will the sailor jackets with the cat faces on either side yes. and the I snap. do I remember yeah. seeing that a lot <laughs> yeah so that was that was the first fairy k actual brand piece I bought I bought some shoes from body line but that was for Lolita which I ended up never wearing for quite some time anyway um and then I bought a body line tutu as well but I was too scared to wear it because I wasn't ready yet I guess which seems hilarious now because I well, they're intimidating with, they are. Yeah. When you first start, they're intimidating. Now it's like, is three enough? Like, <laughs> is three panniers enough to go to the grocery store? Like, but back then it's like, is this too much? Is it too much? Like, it's so funny. But you were talking about Lolita earlier and Hannah, you were talking about Yami Kawaii. So the four things that often get confused with each other, Fairy K, Sweet Lolita, Pastel Decora, and Yami Kawaii. Like, 
they often get confused because of the pastels. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for any newbies that are out there who want to know the difference between the four of those, like, what would you say are the differences? So <laughs> the, the first thing I'll say, I think the, the most difficult one to broach is like the difference between pastel decor and mm -hmm. very sometimes there isn't a difference because there is a lot of overlap. So like, I mean, actually just as an example, what I'm wearing right now, I would just consider it very K. If what you were wearing, Christina, was all pastel, that would be pastel decor to me. Mm -hmm. I do wear a lot of accessories. I have a lot of rings and bracelets on, but you're completely covered with hair clips and fully and completely decorated. And I, 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 well, that's what makes decor decor, I think mm -hmm. is, is the decoration aspect of it. And so it's hard to say because there are some outfits that like some people might consider this very decor. Other people's might consider it not enough to be decor. So that one, I think is the hardest one to kind of broach. If I'm being honest, the only difference to me between fairy K and fairy decor is just the amount of accessories you're wearing. I think silhouettes are generally going to be about the same, you know, as far as if you're going to wear pants, they're going to be, you know, like, pumpkin shorts or you know something like that and you know you're gonna wear a big fluffy skirt just the same as you would wear a fairy k but you're just really decked out no hair visible situation you know <laughs> i would absolutely agree i think like the the only modifier in there is is it decora or not like do you yeah. have the accessory level to be decora because fairy you can have like straight up no accessories like you can oh, have yeah. like a little scrunchie in your hair and no accessories at all and that still will fall into fairy k whereas that can't be said about decora like i cannot have a decora yeah. outfit without the the, the decor. i can't i can't <laughs> yeah you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so i think that's that's the kicker on that one for sure yeah, I think Sweet Lolita is much easier, particularly to explain to someone that already kind of has a vague knowledge of different J fashions. For Sweet Lolita, you know, you need a petticoat, you need to be wearing some sort of, I, well, cupcakes not required, so to speak, but some sort of, you know, there's a certain silhouette that is expected of Sweet Lolita. I think that you could wear like salopettes and things like that from Lolita brands with Fairy K. That's really popular, which is actually my preferred way to wear Lolita, so to speak. But if you look at it, you know, Fairy K is much more casual. I think Lolita is much, much more, not tight laced, but you need a petty. There's, there's much more obvious structure involved yes. with sweet versus Fairy like could just with, be any. With Lolita, <laughs> you need to like, a lot of times you actually kind of do need to buy things specifically created for Lolita. Because if yeah. I go to the store That's and I buy a dress, uh, that dress is not going to have enough uh, room in the skirt for me to put my petticoat under. And then you're just going to end up like this. If you don't have the silhouette, then is it Lolita? Yes. I don't think so. What so. I think is like the trickiest thing when it comes to Lolita and, and Fairy K is like, is it casual Lolita <laughs> or is it Fairy K? As when you start throwing in like actual casual Lolita stuff, I don't mean a casual cordman. I mean, casual Lolita. I mean like the mini skirts. I mean the salopettes. I mean the yeah. cutsos. Where is the line between that drawn? Because I know uh, we have a lot of people in the discord who will be like, hey, check out like my fairy outfit. And I look at that and I'm like, I think that's just casual Lolita. I don't know if it is is you know fairy but at the same time it also checks off all the boxes of both so it can yeah. definitely be kind of a gray area sometimes when you get into the the distinctions between like pastel decora and fairy k and casual lolita and fairy k because like it, yeah you're right i could wear a salopette with i don't wear a full petty but i do wear some sort of petticoat i wouldn't yeah. wear six percent underneath for instance it would be just not a humongous cupcake petticoat but mm -hmm. is that casual Lolita or is it Fairy K? Because I'm also wearing Jeremy Scott shoes and a milk limb cut so underneath. Well, sure, it's not even a cut so. So, but when you start getting into those distinctions, it's kind of like, I think you could say it's both. You know, it's like a Venn diagram and you're yes, in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> mm. So I can definitely understand how, how a newbie could see that and be like, I don't understand. And I don't really have an answer for that either. So that's like fine I think oh there are <laughs> veterans that are like uh I actually I think they look at it what I would see as casual lead and be like oh no that's fairy k and I'm like okay well I I don't maybe think that was the intent ask. Of it, if you ask like, the Lolita, maybe they'll say this is fairy k this isn't Lolita but you know it, so maybe it depends on who you ask um certain coordinates but th those those two I think are as far as sweet Lolita versus fairy k it's easy to say this is the difference 
but there is a lot of overlap. So it's important to know that, well, yeah, there is a lot of, I don't know, kind of in between there too. If you look at a sweet Lolita coordinate, for example, if you pull up, you know, Lovely Laura's Instagram, well, that's going to be a sweet Lolita coordinate. She very much follows, I wouldn't say strict guidelines, but you know, there's a blouse or a cut sew underneath, there's a petticoat. Clearly it's a sweet Lolita inspired coordinate. Whereas if you pull up my Instagram or Hannah's, it's it's pretty much, well, I've been posting a lot of different stuff lately, but it's, you know, going to be Fairy K, even if maybe we're wearing a Lolita piece. Well, you wear a lot of Lolita too. Yeah, See, I was going to say. All right, all right, so yeah, no, I can definitely understand where there's some confusion, but as far as what's definitely sweet Lolita and what's definitely Fairy K, those two are two very different things, but they can be merged. So I think that's where the confusion comes in. And yeah, that's like, kind of all of the styles we're discussing right now is like all of them are kind of on that little Venn diagram. Gram yeah. Well, that's- the only thing that I'll say about Yami Kawaii is, is I think, it, of course, you can mix again, very similar. That, that's the thing about Fairy K is it can be very easily mixed and incorporated into other styles. You can wear Fairy K and well, like, for example, you look at, you know, Spank Girl blogs and, you know, they'll wear leather jackets with their coordinates, with their milkworm shirts and stuff like that. And it works because there's that 80s element to it. I've seen girls wear motorcycle boots with their milkworm shirts. Would I do that? Probably not. But is that a Spank outfit? Sure. With Yami Kawaii, though, I think it's more about the motifs. Yes. Um, mm. Uh, not that you couldn't have. So for example, I think maybe you own it. There's a Listen Flavor sweater that has the big needle on it oh I have the shirt the love pop one that has the big shirt and the eyeball on it that I think what I'm thinking of maybe but but yeah so I mean you could wear a shirt like that although it's all pastel depending on how you coordinate it there she goes sweet (laughs) (laughs) yeah so something like this um this also comes in a black colorway so depending on how you coordinate that that could be I think yami kawaii what makes something yami kawaii to me is the element of a lot of black but I could be wrong there's not, my style, there's not so. also a, like a, one strict way to do yami kawaii. Like yami kawaii can look like a lot of things. You're mainly looking for, like you said, you're mainly looking for that. I think it's about yami, motif. that nightmarish <laughs> element to it. Yeah. So like, there's a lot of stuff that I could wear. I've been wearing a lot more black in my J fashion and stuff lately. A lot of old listen flavor stuff that I wouldn't necessarily say just because I'm wearing black and it's J fashion that makes it yami kawaii. Personally, to me. What makes something Yami Kawaii is like just the, like the theme kind of of the outfit and the motifs. But again, that's, I could be completely wrong about that. I agree there. That's what I would say as well. Same with like Yume Kawaii, which is the flip side. You're again, mostly sticking to certain motifs and you have that dreamy kind of nightmarish (laughs) feel to it, you know, and it can look like a lot of different things and there can be a lot of different colors. And so there, there are more of aesthetics, I'd almost say, than like hard and fast fashion styles. Would you agree with that? (laughs) Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So like you could say like pastel goss, for instance, like I I think that's kind of, which I, I don't, here's my here's my hot take pastel goth is it a real style well a ton of people wear it and call it that so sure you could call it that I don't necessarily say that it's like a j fashion I don't oh, know yeah. that it is I don't think that it is it's definitely inspired by clearly it has roots in j fashion if you think about who popularized it and what they were wearing but that doesn't have the same community and culture that something like fairy k does you know what I mean so this page on on her TikTok is Love doing her. is doing a little series about like where did these styles like get their elements from and so oh, okay. uh, she also talked about uh, pastel goth and like yes there's absolutely Japanese fashion influence but like did it come from Japan that's the, that's the kicker that's mm-hmm. something there's always a lot of confusion on it's like did it come from Japan like Uchu K do you guys know where Uchu came from this is like my like oh I have I a clue like- I think here's the thing. I think that that was a term that was like just made up by someone because they it was made by Lafi on um who was uh, on Tumblr. They were oh my gosh, I have it written down. You say their name once. Lafi. Lafi. That doesn't sound familiar to me. Uh, hold up, Interesting. Hold up. I just thought that Uchu K was was people who wear Sari Puff. Kind of. Oh, yep. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so I, again, Uchu K, I, I don't know a lot about. When I think about Uchu K, I think about uh, girls wearing Cyberdog. Yeah. And gay fashion, like that kind of aesthetic. But because, I mean, it, it's space, you're in space. Mm-hmm. So 
it's interesting. But I mean, I personally, I don't, do I consider that a J fashion? No. But do I have any problem with someone saying, this is my Uchu K chord? No. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. I, what you're talking about, I know what it means. And it is its own kind of separate aesthetic, you know? I'm actually um, interviewing Tempest for the Lolita <gasps> video. Oh, yay! Yeah, I'm excited oh, for that man. one. <laughs> she has, oh man, I love her TikTok. So many good um She's so cute and fun. And I know. Sweet. I, hope she, I hope she sees that. You're a great, Tempest. <laughs> love you, Tempest! <laughs> uh, I will let her know um, when... <laughs> we do film our interview portion. All right, so if someone wants to try wearing Fairy K, how should they start? Do you have any advice? And how do they find other people who wear the style as well? Okay, so we this is like mm. my this biggest passion. Yeah. Sorry, this is like <laughs> my passion. I love helping beginners. And so like we have like a, like a little mentorship program, but my biggest piece of advice is to start by like, looking at street snaps and collecting photos that you like collect the photos get them all in one place together make a little album and then start taking notes be like what do i see what do i see that likes that i like what sparks joy in me you know because sometimes there are things that you're like you know what i'm not sold on that like i really don't like wearing things that have unicorns on them that's probably like uh, i'm a traitor to the fairy king for saying that but it, it's not something that I personally am super gung-ho about. Start making a list of things that you like, things that you see, commonalities that you see, you know. Oh, I've saved like 15 pictures that have a pink skirt in them. Okay, I'm gonna look for a pink skirt. Okay, well, what about that skirt, you know? Oh, it has tears. Oh, okay, well, you know, I'm gonna add another thing to like my shopping list. So you start narrowing down like what I like and really sparks joy. And I put them in the in the comments a little chat over here i po posted two of them one of them is tabby one of them is a uh, street snap and this is the triangle silhouette i really really recommend that people when they're the doing this silhouette picture yes i have i have wow. one because it's a it's a unique triangle and it's not like a super common triangle silhouette get your person and draw the triangle on them. And so you start at the neck and you go down to the hemline, wherever the hem of what the largest garment or like the most voluminous garment that they've got on, where that ends, where does that end? And you connect it and you will see that you have a triangle. And so we call this the fairy triangle. Or if you join the Discord and we suddenly start chanting, chanting Senkaku, Senkaku, uh, we are saying <laughs> triangle, triangle. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> And it really helps to point that out. I mean, I even, I think, Tabby, when I talked to you about it, you were like, wait, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. You know, all the volume at the bottom of this Instagram outfit. And I was like, oh my God, that's that's what it is. Because it's, it's, it's hard because it's just, I just see it. You know what I mean? When I'm coming up with my own outfit, I just, I just you don't have even think about I, it. and I don't think about that. But yeah, when she put it in, in the terms of like the triangle, I was like, oh my God, that that's what it is but so like start pointing out those things to yourself because the sooner you point them out the sooner you're going to be able to recognize them naturally and mm -hmm. so that's going to be like a great jumping point to be like, I recognize you know that they're using all of these different textures that they're using these patterns that they've got this silhouette to it I'm seeing what I like out of these and I'm going to incorporate it into my personal style and also like don't just buy stuff because it is cheap I know that is a massive, massive hole that a lot of people fall into, and I did too. I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is like three bucks on Mercari Japan. I'm going to buy it, and I get it, and I'm like, why? Totally. why did I buy that? Why? And so really, like, think to yourself, like, does this, does this, again, I keep saying spark joy, because that's, <laughs> that's good. Does it make me happy? Does having this item make me happy? Am I buying it for the name brand? Am I buying it because I'm excited to wear it and excited to put it on my body and I like know how to coordinate it? And don't let yourself fall into that trap of just buying whatever is cheap, because you're going to end up with a wardrobe of stuff that you don't like. Mm -hmm. And so it, yeah. it's your... It's, it's, it's your power, Todoroki. It's your fashion. <laughs> you should be the one to love what you wear you should not put it on your body if you are not absolutely head over heels in love with it and, and so don't don't fall into the pit of spending you know 80 dollars on items you don't like when you know maybe you could have taken that and maybe it's a little bit more expensive but say you really wanted a skirt from like miss alphabet and that really is something that you think you're going to wear a lot uh take that money and and go to to them instead and don't just 
don't fall into the trap of just buying things because they're they're cute or because they're mm-hmm. pastel especially when you're just starting out because i know so many people who will be like i found about fairy k and then they'll come to us the next day and they're like hi i went to the mall and i spent 300 dollars buying every single pastel thing in sight and you're like oh oh no oh yeah baby. and a lot of stuff that because i that's you know something that i used to do as well when i first started anything that was pastel on the high street same thing like you said i went to the mall if i went to forever 21 anything that was pastel i i would buy it because oh my god this is so exciting this is how i can start you know but then i one of the first things which unrelatedly i wish i still had this not for fairy k but it was a cotton like baseball jacket kind of like the ones that milk Lim have but it was a black and mint colorway and i loved it and it was like i don't 40 bucks which is way too much for anything at forever 21 but i was like i need this it's going to be worth it. It's hard to find pastel things, which it's not, it's actually not that difficult to find pastel things nowadays, which I, I'm, I kind of like it. It makes it easier to find like, like accessories and things like that, just kind of out and about, which is cool. The or like a hard thing is, is finding instance. things that aren't dusty pastel nowadays. God. Mm. Like, do you want this millennial pink? No, I don't want this millennial pink. I want bubble gum. Bubble gum. Make it bubble gum or get it out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel. So yeah, I, I bought this jacket and then I realized um, it didn't go with anything that I wore and I actually didn't really like it. I just bought it because, well, it's not perfect, but it's close enough. And that's not a trap you want to fall into because it just sucks. And that I, I think the trouble is that people see people like myself and others who have, you know, I mean, I, I don't remember now. I said, what, 2000. 15. So I already by 2015 was wearing the style regularly. So that's, you know, <gasps> there's a cat outside my window. <gasps> Hi, cat. <gasps> there's, okay, there's a tortoise shell in my apartment complex that is stray. And I'm obsessed with her. And I'm sitting directly in front of a window in my bedroom. And she's sitting right outside. <gasps> Baby. I want to trap her. I can't believe it just happened. Oh my God. I can't wait to tell my husband. Holy crap. I haven't. <laughs> her yet because I don't think that I'm going to be able to adopt her but in my mind I have a name for her anyway um (laughs) what was I saying oh yeah so I've been wearing this style since 2015 very long time for me to build up a wardrobe and I definitely do buy a lot more clothes than maybe a regular person does but still that's a very long time for me to be able to build up a wardrobe and wear this every day finding out about a style and then immediately saying I want to wear this every day so bad it's just not realistic and there's nothing wrong with that. It's fine. I have so many clothes that I very rarely repeat pieces and things like that just because I, you know, I want it. Hey, I bought this. I'm going to use it. You know, I didn't buy it for nothing. Husband and mom, please. Like, but there's nothing wrong with wearing the same tutu over and over and over again because you like it and you spend money on it. I think social media in general gives people the idea that they have to have a new coordinate and they have to come mm. up with new and exciting and it's like yeah. even people who don't want to have like a big following and don't want to be like influencers and stuff they still kind of fall into that trap of like well I want everything that I post to be new and exciting and I I love what fairy k what social media has done for fairy k I wouldn't have found a community of people without social media I wouldn't have I mean I some of my lifelong friends I've made through j fashion and some of those people don't even wear J fashion anymore, but I, I love them still, you know? So I love what social media has done for Fairy K, but I also just in general, I think social media is kind of like a pox on like natural creativity and, and people just doing things because they truly like them. And it, I'm, I'm not immune to that either. You know, I, I don't really think anyone is. So it's, you know, it is important that, that newbie, I, again, I almost said new hires. It is important. I think that newbies understand, you know, that it's, it's slow going and I did not start out that way. And whoever it is that you're looking up to on Instagram, who has the perfect wardrobe and the perfect life doesn't, doesn't, and didn't start that way, you know? So yeah, it's, it's very easy for people to fall into the trap of like, I'm not perfect immediately. And therefore I must have, I must have failed. The other thing, There's nothing wrong with only wearing Fairy K at like conventions and things like that. Not everybody can feasibly wear it every single day. Like I'm lucky that I have a job that allows me to dress like that and go to work and and be the supervisor and dress like I'm literally wearing baby clothes. Like, you know what I mean? Depending on the day. But uh, yeah, so it's, 
I think social media kind of makes people feel like they have to be perfect and they have to have the best cord and they have to do this and they have to do that. And it, it does kind of take the fun out of it. And I'm glad that you have the discord and I'm glad that people have spaces where they can actually just openly talk and, and really actually learn what it is that they like about the fashion. Like you were talking about saving photos and things like that. I love that because you may come across a photo on Tokyo fashion and you love it. And you think well, like in your, in your brain, all you really are drawn to is the silhouette and the color palette, but maybe you don't really realize that. So you just think I have to buy this piece. I have mm. to buy this really rare $100 milk limb nightgown lingerie and then you get it and you don't have anything to wear it with and you actually don't really like it that much it doesn't suit you and you know that's something I've done a, a number of times so I like what you said about saving the different pictures and really understanding why you like these photos is it because you really like the silhouette or is it because these colors really work well together and that's what you like about it so that's yeah that that my advice for newbies as well of course would be thrifting of course yes thrift- um, and I know and it's remaking and, and adding remaking. To stuff and <laughs> buying lace and doing like when you made that jacket. I mean, that's really when you think obviously Nile Perch, there's there's so much more that goes into it. They make their own fabrics and all that stuff. But really, when you think about their customized pieces, the jackets, the zip ups and stuff like that, or even like a pair of leg warmers that you find online. I have a broken chocolate bracelet. I'm just going to sew it onto a pair of leg warmers. You know, a little, it's like a That's little piece of candy. Nice. The whole bracelet snap, but stuff like that. Like, and and there is a, a certain pride when someone asks you where you got something, you say, oh, I made this. Like, mm-hmm. here's how you can do it. Like, and, and it's cool to see other people get really excited about that. Like, oh, wow. Like, this isn't inaccessible to me. Like, I yes. could sew a stuffed animal onto... a a thing I could sew lace trim onto a skirt or the hem of a jacket like I don't have to spend a hundred dollars buying some crazy thing from Japan when I don't know how to use a shopping service and I don't you know it which even a shopping service I'm an expert now but they're really intimidating to people I absolutely love what you said about like people being able to make their own items and being having that realization that it is not a far off dream and that I can just do it. If I have the yeah. know-how and I have the stuff to do it, I can go ahead and do it. So at the beginning of the pandemic, I put together before my blog got banned by every Facebook. Your run. Blog got yeah. Uh, so if, if you guys have not no, if probably nobody's seen me posting anything on my blog for like the past year, it's because uh, my blog got zucked. And so you cannot post anything involving my blog on any form of social media unless it's Do you know why? No, it was reported for spam or something like that. And so it's like, oh, your blog uh, violates community guidelines. And so I I need to transfer everything over to a new blog because it was really frustrating to me because I had literally just put together a very K master list of tutorials that has like a hundred to a hundred links to stuff on it. And it's meant to be a document that's shared. It's meant to be informational and I can't, I can't share it, but it is there if you go to my blog on rosecourtsroyalty.blogspot.com. <laughs> I really have no idea that that happened. And I, and I do, that's one of the things that I miss about, and not just Fairy K in general, just kind of like earlier internet is like blogging and stuff like that. Like I love duh with a D Instagram. I love being able to log on and, and see my friends out. I mean, there's people who I don't see for weeks because they're not in my feed because Instagram just decided, eh, you don't need yeah. to see it. It's not the 1% of their audience that that I want to show, but it's like, I follow that person. I want to see their outfits. I want to see my friend's breakfast that they made. I, it's just so frustrating. So I, I really actually miss blogging as like a very early resource for people to look up reviews and things like that and see, that's actually a, a lot of like, if you look up like old school, like 6% or milk limb stuff, like it's from people's like hauls and like shopping service reviews and stuff where you can see, oh, I got this thing from milk limb and And I love looking at old outfit shots and just, I don't know, that that, I miss that aspect of the internet. So I'm very glad to hear that you actually did post that and are still using your blog. (laughs) Well, I need, I need to migrate over because I have not posted anything in a year. I've Mm. been ghostwriting for a Lolita blog in the meantime, but oh, um, it's, yeah, it's, I just, I, I want there to be 
more people to understand that it is totally okay to make your own stuff. And I am all for people making their own stuff. Like it is fantastic. And so much of the roots of this fashion were hand stitched. You know, it, it, there's so many, so much blood, sweat, and tears that goes into a lot of those older coordinates. I just think people wanting to hand make things and having the ability and, and, you know, using the resources that, that we have a community has put together to make their own coordinates. I just wish people leaned more into that and being like, hey, I can't afford, you know, a $40 t-shirt from a, you know, like a small brand that hand makes everything. Okay, let's go to Walmart. Let's go to Walmart. Let's get a pink or, you know, pastel Gildan t-shirt. Let's go to the fabric section of the Walmart or the Joann's across town and let's pick up some lace. Let's pick up some like really cute fabric and let's like, you know, cut out a decal and yeah. stitch it on there. Like you don't even have to have a fancy sewing machine. You can do almost all of that by hand. And so you can have, you know, it's like anything. Any style is as cheap or as expensive as you make it. That if you want to only ever buy brand new things from the top brands, yeah, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. But if you're willing to put in some some uh, blood, sweat, and tears, you can make some pretty cool stuff. Uh, just, you know, fairly cheap. So, yeah. Are there yeah. any like links to, you know, some of these tutorials in the discord that you yes, have? There is okay. in the discord. So uh, cool. there we, we have a FAQ. It's the fairy FAQ. Um, there's actually one visible upon entering. That's like basics, basics, like what is fairy K? And then once you join, uh, you have to fill out a little survey and then I'll let you in there is the oh, very FAQ. Oh. Yeah, because it's vetting because we don't want to have any creeps. So also disclaimer mm. on the Discord, there is a six month time limit, but we are here helping you like make cords. We are like sending cheap stuff in our window shopping channels constantly. So really there there is something for everyone. Even if you don't have like a ton of money, we just have that vetting in place to keep creeps out. Because sometimes yeah. people do kind of treat it like a zoo and they just want to come and look at the, like, the weird frilly people. And they just yeah. want to sit here and like, look at us and not actually ever participate so it is it is vetted we do have a security feature That's um good. yes uh, but yeah we have a the faq and i think it's like one of the very first links on that thing you go up to the very top and it'll say fairy k master list and then you just click on that and we have all sorts of faqs you know like inspiration hair guides just anything that you could need plus sized uh master list boyish master lists you know all these questions that were very common on fairy tips, you know, I'm X, Y, Z. Can I wear fairy K here? We've got yeah. an FAQ for you. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's awesome. awesome. I love, oh my gosh. I love that you mentioned boyish fairy K. I almost kind of forgot that like, that's actually how I started. And I remember all your yeah. words. Oh my God. And like, the reason that that, which of course I, um, everybody knows Maho Prince. Um, and it's so funny <sighs> to say like, I, I, that guy's one of my best friends in the entire world. Like, and I literally have Fairy K to thank for that. And, and really he barely wears the style anymore. He's definitely more decora. Seeing them wear those kind of clothes and, and also not be a woman. I, that, that kind of like switched a little switch in me. I was like, oh, okay. So that, that, like just that little tiny bit, like changed me. I was like, this is, this is very cool. So that was very much the beginning of it, it switched from me looking at the coordinates and dreaming and this and that and this and that to, okay, how do I start actually doing this? Where am I going to go? Um, you know, Prince had a lot of um, Milkland pieces. And so that was kind of the first brand that I really knew about. Of course, I had known about it from Tokyo Fashion as well. You see the cotton candy on the streets all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it's, it's interesting as I started to wear Fairy K more and longer. I almost never wear shorts or pants, the harem pants now. It's it's pretty much always skirts and dresses and not because it, it has to be, obviously, but it's it's interesting that I just got more comfortable with that the longer the longer I dress that way. Yeah. Um, and I think it's it's also good to, to mention boy, like that boyish, <laughs> the boyish the boyish fairy K was absolutely popularized. And and not to say that there aren't there aren't cis men who found boyish fairy k to kind of be like a safe haven but it, it was very and it still is very very common amongst trans fairy k wearers and um, non-binary fairy k wearers mm -hmm. so for this to be a 
you know, kind of safe middle ground where they're, they still feel like that they are being affirmed and they're not presenting and they're presenting in a way, yeah. in a manner that makes them comfortable. And I, absolutely and that's exactly love how I, that. oh my gosh, I love that you see. That's exactly how I felt because, and especially this was a time before I had begun taking hormones. And so, I mean, I, I for the viewers at home, I'm only 4'11". So really, I'm just going to be working against that for the rest of my life. So, you know, looking very short and young and wearing these clothes, it was, it was difficult for me at first to, you know, but I really wanted to wear these clothes so bad. They were so cute and they genuinely did make me so happy. So having that kind of middle ground where it's like, okay, I could just wear a sweatshirt and my, my trusty milk limb snapback, you know, and a pair of denim overalls or something. And that would be, that felt boyish enough to me yes. and sneakers. And I think Fairy K lends itself very well to um, androgyny and yes, and androgyny oh, absolutely styles. And and I, I I almost just said if you take the color palette away, but no, obviously that doesn't matter. But yeah, so that is very much how it was for me, where I felt like okay, this is a very good middle ground. And the longer I was on hormones, the more I felt comfortable with how it was perceived and and how I looked and how I sounded. That I I really more and more. Um, kind of moved away from shorts and pants and and I got to wear the skirts and dresses that I realized, yeah, I actually always really liked this. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's interesting that you brought that up because that's exactly, exactly how it was for me. And not to say that you can't just wear Fairy K-Boy always. Oh, absolutely. It, yeah. and, and, and Because why not? Yeah. <laughs> And with even suit, if you are like, regardless but, of your, your gender identity, you absolutely can wear literally whatever you want. That is yeah, the fantastic yeah. thing about Fairy K. You don't have to identify as a boy to wear boy style. And there's nothing, you don't have to identify as a girl to wear like normal. There's not, there's no yeah. genders. And I think that is absolutely fantastic of how inclusive we are as a community that we're just like, yeah, what are you wearing? I got a skirt on. The interesting cool. thing about that too is that it's, it's, and, and I know, I mean, I'm not, you know, speaking from like, I know about Japan. I know like, you know, politically and socially speaking, things are not great for LGBT people over there. But as far as my individual experiences with Japanese people and Japanese communities, I mean, they, oh, okay. So one of the pictures that comes up a lot, for example, there uh, many, many years ago, I believe in 2014, there was a 6% Doki Doki and Popples collaboration and a lot of the the people in those pictures actually wearing falsies and full six percent in popple outfits um are men and mm. it's just kind of always been like that like there are street snaps and stuff like that there was another set of six percent photos I, I don't remember exactly the occasion I, I think it was part of their international kawaii something but it's the same kind of thing where there's a lot of these people wearing these clothes and this style are men and kind of have been to begin with even though it did start with like the spank girl aesthetic if you know you go back that far but yeah it's kind of always been that way and like when I for instance modeled for six percent doki doki like I was wearing the women's line. So I walked with the women, but I mean, they made it very clear. Like it's not because of, you know, any reason, actually all the men in the show were trans, but they, they basically, you know, they made it very clear. Like you're just wearing the women's line. Like you're not walking with the girls. You're just wearing the women's line. And that, it, so I've actually never, ever, even in Japanese communities had an issue with being a man and wearing the style. Um, Monomoko actually shares my coordinates for her story all the time. And every time I'm like, oh my God, really? With my beard and everything? Okay. So it's like, it's it's cool that there's, I, I don't know. It's like, it really is just so welcoming. Like everybody really, really truly just wants everybody else to feel as cute and fun as they do. Like if they want to, you know, like I, and I think that's, what kind of keeps me in the community versus just kind of wearing it on my own and not really like, you know, it's, it, it's just cool to meet other people that have similar interests and then also build real friendships out of that mm -hmm. because you find out that they also are interested in other things. Like someone messaged me the other day. I'm obsessed with Sky. I love Sky. <laughs> I was going to be Super. Sky. <laughs> Yeah, right. I know. She's like, I, it's any second now, but, um, but yeah, someone, um, who, you know, on the East coast com where it's Gary Kay and Lolita and stuff, she messaged me and was like, Oh, I, I've been listening to this album all week, whatever. This is my local ska band. And we were talking about ska and it's like, I never would have spoken to her otherwise because I followed her for her fashion, you know? So it's, mm -hmm. it's just so cool that, that everyone has that 
sole thing in common that kind of brings everybody together. And then just like any community, you build real friendships from that because of frilly clothes. Like, it's just cool. <laughs> I, I 100% agree. Yeah, I always go off on tangents, but it's like, you know. Oh, and then, okay, well, and here's the other thing too. Speaking of my special interests. So I love dinosaurs, right? Obviously. That's the thing about Fairy K is like, you really can as long as you have your silhouette and you have your thing, like you can do really fun things with it. Like your outfit doesn't have to have be unicorns and, and fairy tales and, you know, lollipops and stuff. Like I have so, so many pieces in my wardrobe that are like full on dinosaur, you know, pieces that I didn't buy from a fairy K brand, but is it a pastel colored dinosaur? Is it going to go on my body? Absolutely. (laughs) So it's, it, that's the other thing that I think is cool about Fairy K is if, if you build the outfit right, and you could say this for any J fashion, I think, if you build the outfit right, you can incorporate really unique pieces that you didn't get from a Japanese brand, that you didn't buy from some special place that was imported in this and that and this and that. I It was a child's backpack in a color that fit my wardrobe. And that's just, it works, like, because it just, you know, is fun and it fits the aesthetic and yeah, I don't know what uh, what made me go off on that tangent, but it's just something about it is just so cool that you really can experiment and, and make it your own. That's that's the thing is, it, although you can easily look at an outfit and say, well, yeah, pretty easily this is fairy K or it isn't, but really everybody kind of still is able to make it their own. Like there's just something about like uh, something about the way that you wear decor, Christina, that is very specific to you. And I can't quite put my finger on it. But if I didn't see your face, I could very easily pick out your cord from a crowd. I feel like, you know what I mean? Absolutely. I feel like everybody has their thing. You could say that about Prince and his decora. And I feel like you could say that about Hannah. Of course, she's always got the big, long pigtails, which I love. And there's just a certain silhouette that that you usually stick to. So it's just everybody does kind of make it their own. and, And I think that's really cool, too, is that it's not. I'm okay I'm buying this sweatshirt because everybody has this sweatshirt and I'm going to buy this skirt because everybody else has this skirt it's I'm sure there are some people that feel that way that's inevitable but um it it really is everybody just kind of wearing what they like and and when someone kind of falls into once you try different things out you know once you kind of fall into your little niche it's like it's just cool it's really cool to see someone find that well just to really like hit the nail on the coffin uh one of the questions was can anyone wear fairy k Mm -hmm. i i feel like we've said it multiple times i mean you and hannah have both said it multiple times already that yes absolutely anyone regardless if you are plus size regardless if you are you know a boy regardless if you're not Asian. Well, that's another a good point that you made, which, which of course, I obviously I'm not Asian. I'm not going to say anybody, blah, 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 who says that is stupid because I, I understand where they're coming from. I understand why you would think that because in other circumstances, like, yes, that would be, you know, the case that certain things are cultural appropriation and that that's a serious thing that needs to be discussed. But in, in, in something like fashion, it's, it's not really super culturally important to someone who's from Japan. And, and a lot of people, uh, well, I mean, that's the the thing too, is a lot of the people that I communicate with on a regular basis and that I'm like mutuals with are from Japan. Like they're, they're Japanese artists and designers and, and like the Milk Limb Funky Pen artists, like they comment on my pictures and like, I mean, it's a really cool. So Japanese people love to see other people wearing their art and mm-hmm. sharing what makes them happy, just like, just like we would. And it's not like I'm wearing a kimono like it's you know it's it's a t-shirt I bought that came from Japan so it's a it's a cultural (laughs) export and I think that's not something that a lot of people understand is that and you can also cite like the fact that brands do come to the United States like six percent came here and has come here regularly comes to the United States for fashion shows for cons for art events you know and they're selling their merchandise and they're like hey we want you guys to purchase this. You know, if that was not yeah. the case, it would be a little bit different. They wouldn't have that. fashion shows here. They wouldn't have pop-ups here. But yes, anyone, regardless of literally any factor, can wear Fairy K. And I think you should. And if it's something that you are interested in and they're watching this video right now, do it. There is no time like Absolutely. the present. Absolutely. And take that dive. It's scary at first. But, you know, I have made some of the, like Tabby said, some of the best connections in my life. Christina, I would have never met you if I had not decided to to go to the fashion show 
uh, in 2018 and, and wear a fairy cape because I had to get into fairy cape first so I could meet you. And I mean, I met you well, yeah. for a Benito concert the night before, but like, you know, like you have to have those situations. You have to make that leap first and it may be terrifying. You know, I know it was very scary for me because I had a lot of Especially uh, opposition. Especially the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but just do it and it will open up such fantastic opportunities for you and you will meet wonderful, fantastic people and just do it. Just it's do just it. fun. Just, you, <laughs> just do you it. might surprise yourself, you know, because she's right. Hannah's right. You know, it's everybody starts somewhere. Nobody rolls out of bed and has the perfect, most amazing full wardrobe. It just doesn't happen like that. Everybody has to start from the bottom and everybody has to start somewhere. And, you know, there's, I mean, you might surprise yourself. I I don't think, I think wearing Fairy K and, and stuff like this really helped me find my confidence just in general. Like, I feel like because I have this attitude, I, I mean, cause you really do have to have a thick skin to go out and about looking like uh, I'm kind of crazy sometimes to most people, honestly, I, I can understand that. And then, you know, so they look and then there's a double take cause there's a mustache happening in my case. So it's like, you know, you have to have a thick skin to a point to be able to kind of walk high and just know I'm wearing this for me. I look great. And it makes me really happy. And really you do start to tune out people staring and people looking and I don't give a shit. I just don't care. And that doesn't happen overnight. That yeah. doesn't happen overnight either. You know, that does come with time, but it really is just starting small, starting it, you know, don't go too far out of your comfort level, but you know, if, if it's something that you've really been thinking about and you really want to try it, I think that you should, no matter who it is and who's watching and who's thinking, you know, I've been looking at these pictures on Instagram for years and I could never wear that. You can. I used to say the same thing. You can, and and that could be you on Instagram with your little milk lemon shit. <laughs> it's good to do it and have the experience and worst case scenario you'll pull it into the next fashion style if you want to wear it uh you you take that confidence you're like you know what i learned how to do a new thing i learned how to buy from an indie brand i learned how to use a shopping service i can take my experience and i can apply that to different situations and use it to benefit you in the long run even if it doesn't work out with fairy k maybe it'll work out with a different style and you'll take those skills you learned and, and run with them yeah yeah absolutely that's a really good point. I feel like we we uh, managed to hit on a lot of very good topics regarding Fairy K. But yeah, I hope that this whole thing was helpful for anybody watching out there who's new to Fairy K. I hope that this has given you like a lot of factual information. And I hope that this encourages you to try out this really amazing fashion but before we say our goodbyes do the both of you have any last words and anything to promote that you would like to promote so i'll go first because i have less to promote (laughs) um basically i I just want to say you know just kind of as a last thought you know other than that i mean truly anyone can wear this fashion if they really want to i mean i'm going to be 30 you know so there really is no age limit or or gender limit or size limit or anything Um, and in addition to that you know maybe you've had a bad experience maybe you're coming from another sub style or another culture or whatever and maybe people weren't as kind there really as a whole it's a very welcoming community most people will be more than happy to help you out show you how to use a shopping service maybe help find a specific piece for you we're really very open and we really want to share it with everybody so and i'll let hannah talk about the discord and stuff but that's um i mean really just reach out you know comment on someone's picture you know can i message you or just just reach out you know and and we'll be happy to help absolutely but yeah, um, if you are interested in learning about Fairy K, uh, specifically trying to begin wearing Fairy K, I'm going to say, I'm going to put that disclaimer on there with the Discord because, again, we do have that time limit, but we are very like lenient about the time limit. So if you're like actively working on it, don't worry, you're going to get up. We'll give you some leniency. But uh, the Discord, Fairy K Discord, I can give Christina a link. And yeah, if you want to put that in the description, uh, you can join that. There's also R slash Fairy K, which I do moderate as well. There is the Fairy K and Decora International community on Facebook, which I also moderate. There is an Amino. It's not very active, but the Fairy K Amino does exist. I have a blog, which Christina will not put in the video or description <laughs> because it will unfortunately brick your your yeah. video and it'll be like you can't post this because you've got contraband. Um, I can't, I got blacklisted. 
but rosequartzrealty.blogspot.com. I have crash courses. I have other information. And once I do migrate that over, there will be a post with linking it and being like, hey, we're moving. So uh, just check those out. There are so many wonderful resources for the community and fairy tips. I, I have nothing to do with fairy tips on Tumblr, but I'm just saying that is a good a great resource. resource. Go yeah, for check so it long. out. Like, I so. don't know. How long has that blog been around? It was old you know? when I first started. Mm. Yeah. So at, at least I, I think it was. It, it was established when I first yeah. started. They're an excellent resource, definitely. And yes. even if some of the links are maybe broken or some of the shops maybe are defunct, it still has, it, it's it's just a, a well of information. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's definitely a very, very good resource for anyone, frankly, whether you're new or not. Yeah, even though I wasn't in like the Fairy Cake community, I don't really wear it. It would show up like in my Tumblr feed, like fairy dash tips.tumblr.com yeah. yeah I think and that's it. it was yeah it was really cool seeing all that and oh my gosh Do, are they still active on Tumblr? Um, not particularly because they kind of got so. run off by people mm -hmm. asking the same questions over and over and over again uh -huh. Um, so yeah, they are, their, their wisdom is still there. Mm. Um, and they are still kind of behind the scenes, uh, in, in some fairy cake communities, but, uh, the blog is not particularly active anymore again, due to the constant pressure of having to answer the same three questions 50 bajillion times. So I understand that, but <laughs> the archive is there it is a fantastic resource yeah. it's an archive uh, you just you're not gonna be able to get any help probably if you submit new questions so take that to the help channel and the very gay discord yeah discord for yep all righty well thank you both so much again for your time for your help for all your knowledge and just uh, all your amazingness i uh, I didn't really say this in the beginning, but I really look up to the both of you a lot. Like Tabby, I remember when I first started with J Fashion, um, I yeah, you were such an inspiration to me. So this really means so much well, thank that you. you're doing. So thank you. Thank you both. I love you, Hannah. Fuck. Oh my God. I'm not in Texas <laughs> anymore, but I, oh my God, I miss you so much, but I miss yes. you as well. <laughs> we, have to, we have to kidnap you and bring you down for a con or i'll come up we'll I'll have to like yes, find a con we, we should and... meet up in california or something um, i would yeah. love Hi, that california <laughs> together but There's let's to here. we'll do a I... disney fashion day <laughs> yes that needs to be a thing fun we yes we should make it happen but all righty thank you all all right bye bye bye, bye. bye.